Hello. We need to tackle question 4E today. And 4E is a different type of inheritance. In 4E, we're going to look at what's called sex linked. Everything that we've talked about up to this point has been autosomal. So when we were talking about cystic fibrosis, Tay-Sachs, sickle cell anemia, Huntington's, those are all autosomal. Whereas on 4E, we're going to switch gears and we're going to get into sex linkage. So we need to be really clear about autosomal versus sex linked. So when you're talking about any allele that is found on a chromosome one through number 22, any allele that's found on chromosome one, five, nine, 21, we call autosomal. So what we talked about earlier, blood typing is autosomal. Cystic fibrosis is autosomal. However, an allele that falls on chromosome number 23, and specifically the larger of the 23 chromosomes, what we refer to as the X chromosome. Don't forget that the 23rd pair, they are not equally sized. There's a much larger chromosome that we call the X, and then there's a smaller chromosome that we call a Y. And we call it the Y because the bottom two chromatids are very thin and the bottom two chromatids tend to stick together. And so it appears under the microscope as if it's shaped like a Y. So what we're talking about here on sex linked traits, these are alleles that are specifically found on the X chromosome, the larger of the two chromosomes in our 23rd pair. And there's two examples that everyone always uses, and IB uses only two examples here. It's colorblindness and it's hemophilia. Now, when you're talking about colorblindness, these people aren't blind. They actually can still see, all right? But what they see aren't the accurate colors that the rest of us see. All right? So these people have issues. There's blue-green color blindness. Okay, and there are other forms, but it's all based on color. They are not blind in that they just see black, right? They, they still have vision, they just don't see colors uh, very well. And then hemophilia, these individuals are bleeders. Their blood doesn't clot properly, and there's different severities to hemophilia. And so some, some people, uh, they, they have a very serious case of hemophilia and some people have a very light case. So it really depends on the individual. There's variance there. So as an example, uh, I'm going to pick, let's put colorblindness. So I need to define my alleles always, okay? So this is a recessive disorder. Both hemophilia and colorblindness are recessive. So that means that the lowercase b, the recessive b, the individual is colorblind. Whereas the dominant allele, this is typical color vision. Done. So now we need to establish our parents. So here's the male, here's the female. Now, don't forget, this is colorblindness, which is sex linked. Since it's sex linked, we need to draw the sex chromosomes here like such. So of course, XX for the female and XY for the male. So let's make, oh, let's make the female colorblind. Let's make this interesting. And let's make the male typical vision. Now notice here in sex link traits, the male only gets one copy of the allele. So it only takes one recessive B to make the male colorblind. Whereas females have a huge advantage here, since females have two X chromosomes, they have to receive two copies of the recessive allele in order to express it. That's why colorblindness and hemophilia are 10 times more common in males than females. And they're much more common in males because the male only has to receive one copy of the allele. All right, so here is our cross. We have a typical visioned male and we have a colorblind female, okay? So same rules apply, it's still a Punnett square, it's still a two by two Punnett square. Like such, let's put her contribution on the top. 
and let's put his contribution on the side. Fine. Well, first things first, these top two rows are XX. So these top two rows, these are our daughters, okay? Whereas the bottom two rows, these are the possibilities for their sons. So here are their daughters and here are their sons. So what do we have in this top left box? Well, here's mom's contribution, dad's contribution, and we get X, big B, X, little b. We then get the same thing over here, X, big B, X, little b. So the daughters here are both going to be heterozygous. So then you go to the bottom and you have X little b from mom Y, so you have a colorblind male, and X little b Y, you have another colorblind male. So let's take a look at our genotype, okay? Our genotypic ratios. So genotypic ratios. Now here's what's cool. There's going to be five of them. One, two, three, four, and five. Because there's three choices for the females, ladies first, but there's only two choices for the male. So notice that these three here, these are all females, and these last two are males. So for the female, she could be homozygous dominant, X big B, X big B. Another choice for the female, she could be heterozygous, X big B, X little b. Homozygous dominant, heterozygous, that only leaves homozygous recessive, X little b, X little b. So there's three choices for the female. Ah, uh, but for the male, there's only two. He's either dominant or recessive. He doesn't have the choice of two alleles because as males, we only carry one X. All right, let's go back to our Punnett square. How many X big B, X big B? How many homozygous dominant females? None. None of these are here. Ah, but both of these are heterozygous females. Two. How many colorblind females? None. How many typical males? How many dominant males? None. How many recessive males? How many colorblind males? Definitely. Two. So five genotypes when it comes to being sex linked, three for the female and two for the male. Now, when you come to the phenotype, there's four choices, one, two, three, and four, okay? You either have a, well, of course, ladies first. The female is either typical or the female is colorblind. Same thing for the male. The male is either typical or the male is colorblind. So what happens here is these two females, even though they have a different genotype, since they both carry and express the big B, they both have typical vision. So both of these females here have typical vision. Whereas this female here, right, she's colorblind, but we don't have any of those. Then you have this male here and this male here. We don't have any typical males, but we do have two colorblind males. So here's what's interesting. As a male, as a male, I received my Y from my father. That's why I'm a male. So I received my X chromosome from my biological mother, from Grandma K. Well, here's what's interesting. If the female expresses hemophilia, if the female expresses colorblindness, the only thing that she has to offer is the detrimental allele. That means when mom is colorblind, 100% of her sons will be colorblind. If mom is a hemophiliac, 100% of her sons will be hemophiliacs. This is where the technology came from to allow parents to choose the sex of their child. They weren't trying to make designer babies at all. Who, were they, who they were trying to help were um, colorblind females, but more importantly, hemophiliac females. Hemophiliac females don't want sons, not because they don't like boys, 
right? A hemophiliac uh, female doesn't want a son because her son will uh, suffer from the same condition that she does. So on 4E, you need to sit down and you need to create, it says create one genetic problem for each of the disorders. Well, which disorders are we talking about? Color blindness and hemophilia. So for 4E, you're writing two questions, one for color blindness and one for hemophilia. Have fun.